I feel like uh, something really important for me to talk about is how I got through this crazy experience called Southwestern College. Um, I don't know how many of you got to actually be with any of these beautiful ladies on this journey. God bless you for your patience, because I know that I, at times, was a crazy person. And my kid is, that could make me start crying, is amazing. It's kind of amazing that everyone showed up, because there are people from out of state, and we all came back together. It doesn't surprise me even a little bit, because we spent a lot of time together and really supported each other on this um, crazy ride that's called being a therapist. It's, you get nine women in a room and a really good teacher and you talk about processing the hell out of everything and you make art and you have it's, it was It was amazing, it was fun, it was funny, it was, I can feel sadness, it was a lot of things. Um, so that was part of how I got through it, was having incredible support and people who loved me. Awesome. Um, I did a lot of driving for my internship. I uh, did my internship in Española. Um, the kind of the big parent is Eight Northern Indian Pueblo Council, and through them they have a couple of different agencies that do mental health. And I did most of my work at New Moon Lodge, and it's a residential treatment facility for um, Native American guys. Uh, yeah, it's an inpatient program. So there's kind of a joke with therapists, at least at this school, that they'll tell you, you're going to end up doing the thing that you either hated, never thought of, didn't want to do for a thousand years, and I am a classic example of this happening. I had no intention of doing uh, substance abuse and addiction. No, had, didn't even want to do it. Working with all guys, no. Uh -uh. Then working with men who come from federal prison, no, I it's never even crossed my mind. And, and then to do groups with 14 of them alone. What? Was, I never envisioned that this would be the experience that I had. I actually, so some of the images that you're seeing, um, this was kind of the original seed of how I came to this internship. And I think it was in Magdalena's class can't remember, but I wrote a paper about a project that I wanted to do talking about multicultural. That's a loaded gun. So I wrote a paper about an idea and I wanted to have an art bus. And I wanted to travel. For those of you who are here, you know, um, there's a lot of, well, I don't know how many, but it's a lot of pueblos. I work with eight of them just in northern New Mexico. Um, and I wanted to do an art bus, and I wanted to travel around, and I wanted to work with communities, and I wanted to make art with kids. Um, so I wrote about this, it was probably about a year and a half ago, and uh, turns out I decided, why the hell should I not try and make this an internship? Why not? And it got to be the last week that I had to make a decision and have an internship lined up, and I was really trying to make it happen, it wasn't happening, I threw my hands up and I was like, forget it. I'm just going to go somewhere, they're going to tell me what to do, and I'm going to be done. And then I walk into class, and Kim, oh, I'm just, sorry, Kim hands me a number, it's this woman that I knew 10 years ago, who happens to work for 8 Northern, who happened to just get a big grant, and is looking for someone to do some art with the community. I literally got that number and it was week 10 and I had to make a choice. So I called her, we had coffee in February. By April, I was <coughs> there. And of course, they pretty much shot down my idea. The day of my interview, they told me that, uh, not in these exact words, but that I was naive, overly ambitious, and there was no way in hell I was gonna make art with eight Pueblos in less than six months. Uh, okay, you know what, I'm here. I get it, you have the experience, that's what I'm looking for. And about six weeks into my internship, uh, the same lady who shot me down in my interview was like, so about that art project. <laughs> and then it just started. Mm -hmm. And um, with the help of the other art therapists who are at 8 Northern, we did make art with all 8 Northern Pueblos. So that's um, the pieces 
the still kind of images that you see are from the quilts. And so that project looked like Something that I've learned is the best way to get something done is to go right up to somebody's face and say, hey, can we do this and get it done? Email doesn't work, phone calls don't work, network, uh uh, you just gotta drive. That's why there's so many pictures of driving, because I drove all over the place. Um, yeah, and so it happened which is amazing to me. It didn't get the art bus, we didn't have money for the bus, but my car held a lot of art supplies, <laughs> and uh, we made it work. And I think by the end of it, we saw probably close to 400 kids. And um, it was really awesome. It was a way for me to stay grounded in this experience, because I can really relate to Maxine talking about putting her hands on the ground. So something that I learned about myself is uh, I really love working with groups. I love it. It is, I had some of my most amazing experiences doing therapy with groups and learning how to tolerate being so flippin' uncomfortable. And that's been like going to the gym. And that's what it felt like in the beginning. I would just come home and my ass, I was getting my ass kicked every day. I have kind of potty mouth sometimes, actually. Uh, I learned it from the guys. Uh, so, yeah, I really love it. Learning how to be in a space with a bunch of, oh my god, okay, I'm gonna tell you this one story. So, I did not have any idea what my internship was gonna look like, no. I just knew, like, this could be an opportunity for me to actually do this community art project, and whatever they tell me to do, I'm just going to do it and trust that, this we say this a lot, trust that it's for the higher good. That's like a clutch <laughs> statement at Southwestern. And it actually was really true. It was for the best. And so I showed up, and I remember thinking, I have no idea what this place does. I bullshitted my way through the interview. I'm not going to lie. I'm good at it. I got the internship. I show up on the first day and I seriously was sitting there like, I have no idea what this place even does. That feels like a bad place to start if you're going to be there for six months. So luckily all the ladies were super nice and it's a very small office. And just to kind of put it into context, I've been working alone with one person for 10 years. So I'm used to like, I go to the studio, I can wear my pajamas if I want to, and there's one person we may or may not talk that day. Then I'm stepping into an office with a really tight group of women. And here I come from Southwestern, and I know that I have a different language, and it's fine, and they're really nice, and I get my first taste of what this internship is gonna be like in that group, and it was a, there's an intensive outpatient program. There's the residential, there's outpatient, there's intensive outpatient, because usually the residential guys kind of go, you know, through the process. So I sit in this conference room, and I'm sitting across from this guy whose face is covered in tattoos. Like, you know, they look like prison tattoos. And I, came face to face with one of my biggest stories about people that I didn't realize that I had. I, in that instant, was like, oh shit, if I saw this guy at the gas station at night, I would probably get in my car and leave. And I knew it in that moment, I was like, oh my god, I'm sitting across from this person who probably two weeks ago, I would have had a huge story about this man. And then of course, he turns out, super soft-spoken, articulate, and just heart, just heart. Like, we had great conversations. So I had an opportunity to really challenge some of the stories that I didn't even know I was carrying about men in particular. Because some of the men that I worked with were homeless, were from prison, were sexual offenders, were child abusers, were the perpetrators in domestic violence situations. I had a lot of judgment about people like that. And this is the group that I landed in. And I'm a woman, and I'm a young woman, and I got hazed the first two weeks while I was there. It was really intense. And in that process, it was something about, 
I don't know how to describe it, but a huge shift. It's like, I can't, I don't know how to describe how you can <coughs> heal parts of yourself that you don't know are hurting mm -hmm. until, whew, that's touching something right there. Mm -hmm. To heal parts of yourself that you don't know that are hurting until you meet the person mm -hmm. in a different situation. And that was, um, <clears throat> that was really powerful. Yeah, that was really powerful. And I learned how to make mistakes, and I learned how to not know what the hell I was doing when I was walking in because I also wear a lot of hats. I'm a mom, I'm a single mom. Um, I, was, I was a full-time student. I was also working. It was a lot. It was a lot. And some days you're just going, you don't know what the hell you're gonna do, but you gotta do something because you're there and you need the hours and it's all the pressure. <laughs> and you know what? You just show up like in this moment right now, I had no idea what I was gonna say. I'm just trusting that whatever comes out, it's gonna be for the highest. <laughs> and it's true, it has really worked out that way for me. And I I feel like I should talk more about my community art project. Um I feel like that was a balance for me. Working in this population. Oh, here's another thing that I said I didn't want to do because we actually have a certificate program for grief and loss. I was like, hell no, I do not want to do. I don't want to talk to people when they just lost and they're like, ugh. And I did a grief and loss group on Mondays and I did that for 10, no, how long? I did that for a long time. That was super intense. And I did, by the end of my internship, I was doing five groups on my own and it was, it was intense, it was a lot. It's a lot to hold space for people who have lost a dozen people in the last year. Violently, tragically, mysteriously, the, this was what I was in every day. And it's a lot. And then I got to go and sit with 40 kids and that's one to help, help me a few times. That was really amazing. And you just sit down with these kids and you just give them a blank canvas and some crayons. You're like, all I want you to do is put a handprint. After that, you do whatever you want. And it was just like, whew, all this stuff poured out. It was so, that was like my swinging back and forth. Like being in this really heavy place and then having the opportunity to work with the kids. And like the lightness, don't get me wrong, it wasn't like, the picture perfect tie bow tie and pretty because they're kids and it's sweet. <laughs> there was some darkness in there too. But it was it was so awesome for me to be able to have that experience where I could just go back and forth. You know, I could be in it and be in that dark space and then I could come out of it and be like, let's laugh. Yes, I will draw SpongeBob. Of course I can draw what whatever the kids are drawing these days. <laughs> There's a lot to be said about the um, spaces and I learned a lot about space and how much that holds mm -hmm. meaning that the land holds our history and it holds our pain and it holds our joy and it holds our family it literally holds us when we pass into the next place and I'll just end with the way that my group ended that was a really intense day but we did this project and um, it took us three weeks, and I asked them to do a vision board. This is my vision board. And we talked about, we do a lot of collaging, and you talked about what, what do you want a future to look like? What does that mean to you? What would you like to be part of that future? And so we worked on this, and oh god, I wish I could show you more of the artwork. I didn't have the releases, but. So this was mine, and then the next part of the project was to make a walking stick that would walk with you on the journey to your future. How can we create something tangible to hold all of our hope and dream and fear and all of that and remind us every day that we're walking with it and all the things that make us strong and that love us are walking with us. And after I put these two stripes on, one of the guys told me, oh, those are our warrior. That's what we paint on our face. So they told me, this is my warrior princess. <laughs> I am a warrior princess. And so we did these. This was really cool because we got to walk down to the river together. And um, on the last day, and I can pass this around.
or lots of lawyers did, so it's fine. Um, the guys gave me this, some of the men who were in there were amazing artists. I saw a man paint with, what are those candies? The, that's really generic. What are those candies that are the hard sucker candies? Uh, Jolly Ranchers. Jolly Ranchers. He painted with Jolly Ranchers. He learned how to do that in jail, and he made me this beautiful image of a rose painted with Jolly Ranchers. And the things that these guys could do with a pencil and a pen just blew my mind, so I can leave this somewhere. They gave me this. It's really, you have to just see the detail of it. There's a lot in here. It's, and this man drummed me out and sang prayer songs for me. And um, the same guy who did that drawing, he took a white rag and he started to rip it. And then he knotted this. And then with the pen, he dyed the fringe. And then a, another man who was really into creative writing wrote a poem. And I'll read it to you. It's pretty awesome. We arrive in the darkest hours of our lives amidst the swarms of silence and uncertainty, balanced on the thinnest edge of then and now, until the sun parted the veil of sadness and woe, showed us the world. Gloriously in song and thought held our hand as we buried the past and looked forward to the morrow and shined the light of hope warm on our faces. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs>